So what if they took your favorite gaming IP and turned it into a movie or TV show? That is the big potential that could come out of this entire thing in the gaming world. I'm Desmond Dukes. Sitting next to me is Damar Dukes. And this is Platform Gamer Podcast, which starts right now. What is going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast once again. It is October 25th, 2020. I was worried I was going to miss that one, but (laughs) nevertheless, (laughs) we got the date right. (laughs) We hope you guys enjoy what you're going to be hearing today and uh, make sure that you guys are subscribed and Turn on that bell for all notifications and smash that like button right here on the YouTube channel. Um, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PlatformGamerP1. And also, you can check us out on Facebook.com for all the latest information as well. And if you want to listen to us through our audio form, whether you're at work, at the gym, just chilling at the house on a rainy day, and you just want to listen to a really good podcast then look no further than Platform Gamer Podcast, so you can find us on Podbean and Spotify. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So, the uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about was there's a lot of gaming IPs throughout the, the world of video games. And we've had some, actually we've had quite a few, that have become movies. Now, there were a couple that were kind of so-so. They were all right. Maybe a couple of decent ones, but all the rest of them were just crap. So that is the situation that we've run into right now is that the the video game franchise and all of these different IPs have not done well. And I think a lot of it has to do with Hollywood has been trying too hard to make these things work in a sense, because they've seen how well the comic book realm has worked, especially for Marvel and most of DC. But now when you're getting to the point of, okay, we've got these video game IPs and we can't make them work. But then you got to realize too, and I remember Robert Burnett from the John Campia show, shout out to him, um, had stated that video game movies don't really do well simply because of the fact they're interactive as opposed to watching them where you're not really interactive. You're just watching things happen versus you playing the game. And then you like being invested because now you're a part of the story. You are controlling the story and you are controlling the characters within that story. Um, So Damar, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, before we jumped into what games we could see as potential, um, gaming IPs that they could turn into movies or TV shows. What are your thoughts on some of the things that have been brought up about video games? Some of them have been saying that they're just a cash grab. You know, others are saying video games just don't do it right. And really the gaming community has been really kind of up in arms about some of these gaming franchises, especially some of the failures of games such as Super Mario Brothers, games like Assassin's Creed recently, you know, games like that. Damar, what do you what do you get out of this uh, this situation? <clears throat> yeah, I, I can definitely see how there's a little bit of a disconnect when it comes to video game to the big screen, especially because of the fact of the processes that go in between when we transition from from console or even PC to the big screen you have a lot of different works that are happening in that process. Not to mention the fact, I think when you have uh, other types of studios trying to jump on and trying to uh, partner with some of these uh, gaming franchises, the thing about it is it seems almost like they try to, to retell the story in their own image, almost like giving a Hollywood kind of makeover. If I, if I go so far as to say, um, I think kind of redoing things and kind of almost like rehashing things is definitely going to cause a lot of disconnect with some of the 
with with many of the gamer fans that have been following the franchise, depending on how long that franchise has been out. Mm -hmm. uh, but some for many years, others for decades. And definitely one of the other things, too, is going to be storyline development, not to mention placement. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to make a movie and let's say, for example, it deals with a, a new enemy or something along those lines. OK, now the question remains, when you make this movie, where exactly storyline wise or even timeline wise does this particular movie <clears throat> place itself within the franchise of this of this game? And sometimes you can't really place anywhere. It's kind of like its own standalone. It might as well have been given its own title and given it just be completely standalone. So I mm -hmm. think that's definitely a lot of things that definitely caused, caused a lot of uh, discernment when it comes to that. I think a lot of people kind of, so I'm not going to say people completely gave up on when it comes to things like uh, games to movies, but I think definitely it's that element of, there's a high, high level of expectation when it comes to these things too. Mm -hmm. So and I think many, many times, more times than not, that's the reason why it's because they fall flat. Usually they don't pick the right actor or it's just the fact that the storyline is too flat or maybe they find the right actor, but it's just the performance just wasn't there. There's just so many different things and it's going to get nitpicked very hard. Video game, mm -hmm. uh, video game fans could be the absolute rawest critics when it comes to putting their opinions out on the content that they watch yeah this character didn't jump too high or this doesn't make sense to this character or, or you know i don't see that land that land was never in the original thing you know they they you know the the gaming community is very boisterous when it comes to that kind of stuff and i'll use one as an example we'll take alone in the dark now I'm telling you right now, and I will go on record saying this, that Uwe Boll is the worst video game director on the planet. <laughs> I'm just getting that out there right now. And I am so thankfully glad that he does not make video game movies anymore, that I know of anyway. Um, but, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really troubling to see and hear these kinds of things because you know there's a lot of potential there. And it really is unfortunate when, you know these these video game studios and developers that 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 created these IPs that they invested in, and then they want to turn them into movies. And then Hollywood's like, okay, we've got limited rights to this franchise, so we're gonna make it into the movie that we want. We're just gonna hire a certain director or a writer or whatever. Now lately, it has gotten better as far as like directors and writers and actors and actresses and who they get to do these roles that has gotten a lot better i'll take tomb raider as a prime example you took what you did with Ju uh, um angelita jolie which i thought was a great fit you know second movie not quite all that the first one was decent the first one was decent and then you do the one with alicia vikander who's a you uh uh an award-winning actress <laughs> and you have her playing a role. And I thought that Tomb Raider movie was pretty darn good, you know, but it doesn't resonate with the entire community. And I think that's where the disconnect is. We have to know the difference between a gaming movie and TV show versus just a game. You know, you can take, it's just like what they did with Marvel and their game. Not everything in the comic books are going to be in their movies because they know what logistically can work and what can't, even right. in, in some type of logical sense. So, yeah. but they've done it in such a way that it's it's captivating and it keeps people coming back for more. And I think that's done very well by the writers, the producers, you know, everybody behind the scenes, the directors, the actors, you know, all of that. So taking all of that into account, then yes, you can create a successful story in video games the same way. You just have to approach it differently. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that. And another thing too is the fact of when you, when you're, let's say for example, it's also the direction of what you decide to go with when it comes to turning something into a movie or even a TV series, like, okay, what type of, film photography we're going to use are we going to make everything completely cg or mm -hmm. is it going to be like uh avatar kind of thing where you have the cg and the real people you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing you know sometimes 
blending the two together is a perfect fit. Other times it just completely falls flat. It's like, what is this? Mm-hmm. You know? So that's another thing too, is, is the overall approach in the execution. What works best for a franchise of this type based on the type of content that you've given that the fans are more accustomed to seeing. Yep. And with all that being said, so we're going to throw out some titles and we're just, we're just spitballing here, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're not saying these, these, these IPs are going to turn into actual movies or TV shows or anything, but we're kind of just, this, this podcast is basically just giving you a general idea that if we wanted to see a particular um, video game turn into a movie or TV show, how would we approach it? And what would we do storyline wise that would make people make it attractive for everybody to watch, you know? So um, I'm going to jump to the big one. And I know I was like almost a year late to the party, (laughs) but I finally had a chance to sit down and see the trailer. And I know I'm probably going to get some flack for this, but I finally sat down and seen the trailer to Diablo four. My God, (laughs) just give me that as a movie. And I think Diablo just in general, I think would make a great movie, but the way it has to be done, it cannot be live action. I think certain ga- certain certain game to movies should not be live action at all. And it should be put into the hands of these gaming studios because they can create the story that best fits because they know the material, they know the story, they know the lore. They can put all of those things into one and then be able to give you what you want. You know, and then still... and with it being like CG animated, especially giving it that realistic look and feel. I mean, that is limitless to what you can do. You can do all of the stuff they can do in video games and make it look good. And I think if they were to do like a Diablo, do it in the same CGI realm as, as Diablo four, really keep it that scary horror element. um, And then, telling a really great story on top of that. I mean, this this has the potential that could be very, very well done as a movie. You know, and Diablo is one of those games that, yes, it's an overhead view game and you have to, you know, you can kind of pick and choose and figure out how you want your, your character to be. But in the CG realm, sky's the limit. So I definitely see potential in a Diablo movie. What do you think? Yeah, I can definitely see uh, Diablo into a movie. Absolutely. Um, And I do agree. I think it should actually be um, all CG. I think uh, I think keeping it within that realm, I think it it keeps I think it keeps that consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, I think just by the way the trailer looked for Diablo four, just the music, the way the the storyline played out the way that the ambiance of just the energy of the scenes, the, the, just the acting quality was just Mm -hmm. on. And then just the way, um, just the way the whole ending came about when Lilith came down, that, that was, it was just epically beautiful. I mean, I remember uh, reading a lot of the comments and a lot of the people and the, um, on YouTube and a lot of people were saying the same stuff that we're saying right now. Everybody would love to see this into a movie. No question. I think, I think if you were to do a Diablo movie, especially if you were going to do one based on Diablo four, I would have that whole cinematic sequence be the beginning. Then when the intro kicks in, you know, saying, you know, Diablo four or whatever, Diablo, however you want to say it, you know, then let's say you cut to to a few years later. Now Lilith's, Lilith's already been out. You know, this, you know, the, the beginning sequence is kind of like the catalyst leading to everything that is happening. So mm-hmm. I think you could, like I said, you could take it, you know, so many years or months or whatever later. And now you're kind of seeing some of the aftermath. And now we're seeing how and what heroes are going to step up to go against something like that. I think that could be done really, really well as a movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I would probably even flip the script how you would have it at the beginning. I would have it at the end. 
Okay. And I, would have that, and I would have that set the tone for the main basis of the premise of the story. I feel like a story that leads into all of that, because mm -hmm. based on from my perspective of how I watched it, it seemed like a lot of everything that happened already took place. And mm -hmm. so to lead up to how all this chaos happened, all the death, um, just the whole culmination of everything and 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 just the raw greediness of of how you have these bandits, these barbarians that are just trying to make their way to this temple. And, you know, these guys are just trying to hoard treasure, not even knowing what really is awaiting them. This, this was oh. clearly, this was clearly like something that was almost like pre-planned, like a long time ago. I was like, these are the guys who were going to stand up for the whole thing. So I think that's how I would have it play out at least. Yeah. And, and if anybody really paid attention, because I've seen that trailer now m probably more than half a dozen times. So I would say that the 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 dude that kind of led those bandits in there to begin with, including the uh, the the dude that was just there, kind of just, you know, he wanted knowledge. Like, mm -hmm. I guess I guess who, like he's he'd be like a monk or something. Something like, more like a sorcerer. Thank you. Something like that. So yeah. I think, yeah, I actually kind of like your approach, having it at the end. So everything that took place within a Diablo before, this way is like somebody took out Diablo. We're going to, you know, resurrect his his daughter, resurrect the daughter, Lilith, and bring her into the fold. Um and and you know they would use he would call her like his mother in a sense as he said in the trailer but i don't know either way i think diablo would, and blizzard and blizzard cgi was top notch if they can get the right funding cuz they wouldn't even have to foot so much of the film like they can they could foot most of it because it's their production but if they can get you know a big enough budget to give us that in a full-length film, give me one that's like two hours and ten minutes long. <laughs> that's all I need. Two minutes and ten, two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, yeah you know, definitely. You, I could see that being so potential, and and the way they laid that story out, especially if they can keep that consistency, keep that horror element, keep the atmosphere, keep the high octane intensity. That was one thing that really stood out to me in that trailer was how tense. That whole scene was yeah. that yeah. whole thing just kept you on the edge of your seat. If you can keep that with an audience, I dare them. I dare them to take that trailer, put it in a movie theater, you know, before an actual movie starts, have it be yeah, like a packed theater, whenever that happens, have it in a packed theater, show that trailer to those people and just watch the reaction they get out of that. I oh, dare them yeah. to try something like that, especially at an IMAX. Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could I could definitely tell you nobody's getting out of their seat. <laughs> no, nobody's getting out of their seat. And people will I be like, the bathroom. I am going to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this coming out? Is it what movie is this? And then they realize it's a game, and I'll just see the disappointed look on their faces. <laughs> right. But Blizzard, yeah. and, and I'm sure Blizzard has probably gotten this several, several thousand, hundreds of thousands of times after that trailer dropped at uh, BlizzardCon uh, last year. Because it happened at the end of last year. But I know for a fact they probably had numerous amounts of people tell them, dude, y'all need to make this into a movie. This is great. You know? And, you know, maybe it's something they should explore. I mean, okay, granted... World of Warcraft, be it as it may, got mixed reviews. A yeah. lot of it was good. Some of it was bad. But it was kind of like an in-betweener. So if you can use that as a basis to be like, okay, what can we do different? I suggest just keeping it all CG. Don't make anything real. Give it, make it look realistic. Let it move and be fluently realistic. But continue to make that grow and turn that into something that could potentially be great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, but what do you guys think out there? What do you guys think of Diablo becoming a movie? How would you set that up? 
Um, I know director wise, man, that would probably be the main thing is who would you get to direct and write this thing? <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, I think whoever Blizzard had to direct this, that, that CGI sequence and the writer for that, I think they should just use them. Like, don't go to anybody in Hollywood, you know, don't go to an outside source, keep it all in house. Mm -hmm. Think uh, that's a lot of money on the table for them by yeah. doing it that way. So I don't know. But anyway, you guys let me know what you think of, of Diablo and if they were to turn that into a movie or not. But the next game I would like to talk about is uh, Star Fox. Mm. You talk about what could potentially be a great sci-fi ch children's movie. Star Fox is it, baby, right there. I, I have been thinking of a Star Fox film for like many, many years. And I think it could be, ten and you could use, you could, you could use more realistic stuff. Like you could keep it live action, but have the characters be CG, almost like they did with Rocket Raccoon. They could make them, the CG look that good for a Star Fox film. But it would all, I think that would be one of the films that would mesh really well um, between CG and live action. And you could tell a great sci-fi story, you know, them going after um, Andros, trying to stop him. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of potential there. And I think having, having it done with animals, especially if you can make it just a, you know, just a PG film, kids would flock to the theaters to go see that, especially if it was done the right way. What do you think, Damar? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I know if it's one thing, Ever since they brought them in the scene, <laughs> I would give my left arm to see <laughs> a space battle between Star Fox and Star Wolf. <laughs> my God. <laughs> that would be epic. I would, oh my God. I would help fund it myself. <laughs> that, that was, I mean, the fact, because of the fact, I mean, when you have, when you have movies like Star Wars and, and Star Trek and things of that nature, like, you almost can't go wrong. You really can't mm -hmm. go wrong. I would even have the directors of either one of those actually doing it. Probably more along the lines of uh, those who did uh, Star Trek uh, as opposed to uh, Star Wars. But I think that more and like more or less, I think Star Wars probably more fits within the realm of um, of of where Star Fox is kind of going into. There's a little bit more grittiness when it comes to the Star Wars as opposed to Star Trek, but mm -hmm. the space battle scenes, I'm sorry, the space battle scenes, Star Trek has it beat, no question. <laughs> you heard it first, folks. Star Trek has better action scenes than Star Wars. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but... Hey, hey. I, hey look, I'm a Star Trek guy. I'm just, I love Star Trek. But anyway, uh, but yeah, I think you could, you could tell a really great story with that, and There'd be a lot of great comedic humor in that film. And, you know, you can add in some good serious scenes. Um, I don't think they should do which Star Fox game. One of the Star Fox games where they went and was stuck on a planet and they were like fighting dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> but if you take me to like the first game where it takes place on like their planet and around their solar system in that sense, you know, I think they could really, they, it, they almost would have the personalities of like a lot of the Ninja Turtles, maybe one of them a little less than Michelangelo, but it's got, it's got, even if you didn't want to do it CGI, even if you did it like puppeteer style, if you could do that with today's technology in a puppeteer style, the, the film would still be great. This film would absolutely be great. And I think, that, like you said, the space battles would be great, especially if you could tell a great kid's story. Yeah. Have it have some meaning behind it. And I think that will be the strong point is what lessons can you give out to kids with this type of film? And I think Nintendo could potentially hit a home run with this one if they do it the right way and find the right people to do it. Yeah, yeah. To bring the whole element of Corneria and all the different things, because let's face it, Realistically, we really don't know all that much about Corneria. We really don't. 
<laughs> Everything mostly revolves around the Star Fox team. <laughs> and the space station that they seem to to live on and these guys just get hired they're like mercenaries <laughs> we really don't know much about carnaria if anything at all so i think definitely with a movie to show us more deeper elements as to carnarian itself um because obviously they're protecting carnaria and of course the, the whole solar system for that matter but just to see the other solar systems that uh, we know we visited in Star Fox 64 and such, you know, there's definitely a lot, a lot of potential there. And just to see how you can bring a threat like Andros to the big screen, you can really make some real magic happen with that. And like you said, they could tell a incredible, impactful story, but also there's there, you definitely could put some life lessons in that um, with the storyline of that nature. I I couldn't agree more, man. And Star Fox is Star Fox would be it for me. I would I would pay good money, especially if you if you took it within the realm as far as like life lessons go. I think one of the big animated franchises that has been really really great with telling life lessons. I'm not a huge fan of Disney, but Toy Story films, all four of them, had some of the best lessons for children that I've seen in movies in a long time. And I think if you take that type of approach using the story, the Toy Story element for Star Fox, you could easily get, you know, two, three, four movies out of that thing, especially if you stay consistent, just like they did with that. You don't have to bring it out every year or every other year. You can wait two or three years, bring out the next one. Then wait another two or three years, bring out the next one. As long as that quality is strong, and I think with that being said, Star Fox could be an absolute gem when it comes yeah. to the movie theater. So that's 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 my oh, take on that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man, you give, you give me the 3D element, boy, it's all over with. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen any 3D movies in a while, man. And I think in 2D and 3D with that movie, I think that would that would that would be epic. That would be really yeah. epic. So yeah, I'm definitely that. You have great CG battles in space. Um, you know, I and nobody has to die in that. That's that's another great thing. Nobody has to die. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but um, again, you guys, you know, watching us right now, leave a comment in the section below and tell us what you guys think about Star Fox potentially coming a movie or becoming a movie in that sense. Um, let's see. Ah, Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls. This one I do not want to see as a movie. I want this as a TV show. <laughs> if you look at, if you look at, and I'm going to go back to the whole Diablo thing. If you take what they did with all those cinematic sequences for the Elder Scrolls Online, from that very first one all the way up to the most recent one, if you meshed all of them together and kept all of the same characters and just you know add some dialogue, obviously, right. that that is that is solid work right there. And I yeah. think with Bethesda now being under Microsoft's uh, umbrella, they can get the funding to make something like that because people have been talking about them making a CG movie for a long time. And everything yeah. would fit within that world, within that world, the atmosphere, the music was great, you know, and they were all cinematic sequences and the characters look absolutely real and move fluently. So you could take that and, you know, take that times 10, give me a good, you know, even if you didn't want to do a full hour of a TV show, you could give me, you know, 30 minutes of each, you know, of each episode, if you wanted to do it that way, but you could tell one continuous story within a season. And I think probably one of the best directors that you could possibly get for that. If I had to choose only because he's got, you know, knowledge of that type of world, I would have to give it to Peter Jackson. <laughs> if I wanted somebody to direct this thing, it would be Peter Jackson. If I wanted to step outside, but other than that, I say keep it in-house, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ZeniMax and Bethesda, they, they've got a gem on their hands. Put that bad boy on Netflix. The, the Witcher's already on there, and they're getting ready for season two. <laughs> so yeah. there's yeah. definitely potential there. 
absolute potential there. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who, I mean, what could we possibly say about uh, a, a television series or something of that nature that hasn't already been said. And to me, <laughs> right. I feel like, I definitely feel like now some of you guys who happen to be anime fans, some of you might know of this particular title. Some of you might not, but I feel like elder scrolls would be like the updated version of record of Lotus war. For those okay. of you who happen to be familiar with that, because I know Record of Lotus War and especially Record of Lotus War Chronicles of the Heroic Knight, that was by far one of the best animated series I have ever seen. The storylines, the, the, the character development, the way the battles played out. I mean, you, you almost loved every single person they brought onto the screen. And I feel like this definitely has an absolute potential of maxing that and even taking it a step further. That's what came to mind whenever I uh, watched, um, I mean, what, whenever I played games like uh, Elder Scrolls and especially with Morrowind and such. And I mean, and yeah, some people might even throw uh, Lord of the Rings in there. I mean, technically, y'all can almost say that it's like a record of Lotus War meets Lord of the Rings and you just throw it all together and this mess them together. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I definitely think that. Um, it would definitely make a very good series. And I think it would be just even greater successful, more successful than even that of uh, record of Lois war. But yeah, def definitely by far, I would love to see this as a series. No question. So th with this, there's a lot of potential for elder scrolls and I'm going to list off some of those potentials. Number one, the characters that you already established within the C the CGI cinematics of the three main characters, along with some of the side characters that you've introduced throughout the cinematic sequences, I would definitely keep a lot of them intact, you know, because the stories with all of them are very, very interesting. You know, you got the elf girl, you got that warrior dude, and then you got uh, that, uh, that archer slash assassin guy, you know, and you could play off of that. Another thing that would, that greatly helps them, you know, it's Elder Scrolls. It's it's free reign because it's such an open world with so many different characters that you could introduce. You know, so many different lands. You could start off in Morrowind. Then you can go to Hammerfall. Then you can go to the what is it? Uh, Summers, uh, Summers, okay. yeah, Somerset. Take it to Skyrim. I mean, you have all these potentials. You could take all of those elements and bring them into this series and have them intertwine and just absolutely make this thing work. And then another potential thing, and this goes back to what I said just a moment ago, it's, it's, it's free reign. You could do it as a CG, which means you don't feel constrained to doing it live action, taking away from some of the physics of what, um, of what the, what, live action couldn't do but in cg you can mm -hmm. you know and then just you know step up the step up the uh the actors and actresses man because i tell you they can you get the right ones on there man they can bring it even if you brought in just a couple of big names and then still keep everybody else the same there's so much potential there and the story that you know but whoever they got to write the story for all these cinematics they need to write that they need to absolutely write this thing. And you yep. could easily, easily get five to 10 seasons out of that. Like oh, yeah. legit, because there's so much story with so many characters that you could build off of and you yeah. could build up to this huge finale, you know, and it's all basically one huge story, almost like, um, almost like Game of Thrones, you know, and how each season it all pertained to one story but you get separate parts of the story. And I think Elder Scrolls could go in that direction. You could even do like a spinoff or, or something like that. Like the one that I wanted to write was one called uh, Elder Scrolls, uh, The Dark Brotherhood. And I would basically tell a story of the Dark Brotherhood and you know some of the contracts they dealt with and some of the enemies they had to face. You could throw that in there too and have it all still be in the same realm. Kind of like what they did with Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, <laughs> you know, Chicago whatever. You know, you could, there's so much potential for you to do it that way, especially with Elder Scrolls, that the sky's the limit. 
Damn, I was just going to say that. <laughs> I, gonna, just gonna... I beat you to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, though. You're absolutely right. I mean, let's face it, for a game to where you could spend six hours a day for like two, three months straight and still not even get into the main story, I'm pretty sure they could write I'm pretty sure they could write a solution series. You know? Exactly. You know, just you could do an episode on side quests, you know, or something like that, you, you know, could. but and make but, them meaningful and Absolutely. make them meaningful and make them part of the story, because whatever happens within that episode, think about that, like two or three seasons down the road. And then that potential character comes back because of what you did for that character. So now it's all again, it all intertwines. So exactly. there's so much potential that you could do with an Elder Scrolls that it's yeah. almost mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely. And then keep it keep it CG. Don't make it live action. That's one thing I would highly suggest. Don't make that live action. Keep it CG. It it works very well CG, and it can continue to work well. And the dangers that these characters go up against, keep that the same too, because you they make it out like. You have no clue if these characters are going to live because the dangers that they faced in those cinematic sequences look like they should have been dead like 10 times over. But the <laughs> fact that they still continue to live and find ways to survive, I really like that. And that's what kept me invested. And I think that's what keep audiences invested when you can bring that type of element to, uh, to the small screen like that. Mm -hmm. Now, could they put that on any just any old TV station? No, no, absolutely. I wouldn't. So I would, I would, you could put it on Netflix. Hulu's got its own service. You can even put it on Apple TV. You know, you could put it on HBO. You know, you could anything prime time, like those big prime premium channels. Um, stars would even probably, I could see stars having something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I couldn't see nothing like that, like on an NBC or a CBS or something like that. It just, it just wouldn't work because you would feel limited and constrained within the confines of your time slot um, of what you're showing your audience. So in order to broaden that audience, you're going to have to go someplace where you have basically free reign. And I think what Netflix has been doing with a lot of shows is a testament to how great they are by just giving people and giving studios opportunities. I think this is an opportunity for them to take that. Heck, you can even put it on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime would freaking eat that up. They're working on the Lord of the Rings right now. Give us two series like that. I'm okay with that. One CG, one live action. I'm totally with it. Yep. Yep. So, but you guys tell me what you think out there, Elder Scrolls as a TV show or even a potential movie for some of you that would prefer it to be a movie. But you guys tell us what you think about this. And again, if you like what you're hearing from us, please, please hit that like button because that really helps in the analytics and it helps get our broadcast out there so more and more people can listen to us. So um, the next film that, or next film, the next game that I would like to see. Now, this one, this one could go film or TV. And it can be done in live action because I've seen it done in live action mixed with CG. And it works really, really well. And I'm talking about Metroid. Metroid, I think, would be an absolute monster if you've done it the right way. It's, it's a great sci-fi, you know, Sci-fi epic dealing with a bounty hunter going after like Metroids and dealing with space pirates and all that kind of stuff. Um, my biggest fear would be who would they cast to play Samus? Because there's got to be somebody that could really look and feel the part. It really wouldn't technically matter as long as they played the part right. But I just don't want them to make a mistake and get somebody that I'm just like, uh they kind of did okay. <laughs> no, okay is not good enough. <laughs> so, but but yeah, a Metroid movie I think would be absolutely awesome. There's been there's been live action short films of Metroid. Um, I definitely suggest there's like maybe one or two of them that I thought were really good. Uh, obviously, they're dated for their time, but. At the time, they were really good, and I really enjoyed them. But, Damar, what are your thoughts on a Samus movie and the potentials of them being a movie or a TV show, for that matter? 
Yeah, I would definitely be all for that, especially when you take about when you, when you take about when you think about all the different things that happened in the Metroid games that have been released thus far. It's, it's like you can definitely it's definitely the kind of uh, it's definitely the kind of storyline where you can absolutely expand it. It deals with space, which means more enemies, more monsters. You can get as creative as you want to, mm -hmm. uh, not to mention the fact if you want to add any special kind of upgrades or modifications to Samus while she's doing uh, these particular journeys, you certainly could go that route. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely a lot of potential. And the fact that Samus is such a strong character as well, like she she's not some damsel in distress kind of thing. Right. You know? She is definitely someone who is very iconic. She's looked at with a lot of respect for a, from a lot of the gaming based communities. And on top of that, she is just she's just overall just she'll kick your butt if if, if you ever. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I think that that definitely holds true. And they should definitely keep the character. The, the character is very strong minded. And I think yeah. that's one of the things. I think that's where they messed up on what was it, Samus M? It yeah. was either Samus M or Samus, Samus M two, where they made her basically like not a damsel in distress, but she couldn't do anything without this guy's help or whatever. And mm -hmm. it really took away from what the character was supposed to be. So a lot of people were turned off by it. Yeah. But I think if you can go back to her roots of her being like an Ellen Ripley type you know, heavy hitter, I think the series can go very, very far. And I would I I would really like it to be more of a TV show. I think a TV show could could do that really, really well. And you could actually set up a TV show, especially one of the seasons. You could set up one whole season to set up for the release of a new game. You could ah, yeah. set it up that way. Certainly could. Certainly so, could. Yeah. And and there's a lot of potential with doing it that way. I mean, and the seasons don't have to be long. You can keep them like nine, nine to 12 episodes and you're you're good to go. <laughs> you know, even if you want to go shorter than that, I've seen some shows that will do like six or five. You know, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. suggest going that low, but I definitely think, you know, a good nine, 10 episode season. I think would really cap things off. And especially if you, if you did it a certain way where instead of dropping them, like binge watching them, you could drop an episode each week. Cause that seems to be working for a lot of shows and it makes people, it keeps people talking. It really right. keeps people talking for the long run versus doing the binge. And then people will talk about it for like a month or two, three months, six months tops. And then it's done. Whereas right. you do it episode per episode now you've got something that can stretch out throughout the course of like nine, 10, you know, a whole year or longer leading up to the next season, which that could take place after the game. So there's so much potential there that you can do with a Metroid and the CGI effects, because you can add that eeriness, that scariness to it with yeah, a lot of like the Metroid uh, creatures um, and the monsters that she fights. You can add her bounty hunter element. You know, you can have her kind of go off the rails and go deal with something that's not always dealing with the Metroid situation. Yep. But you have a lot of potential there for a, a Metroid Samus TV show, in my opinion. And I think it would definitely make a better TV show than it would a movie. A movie could work, but you would feel constrained to fit everything within that two-hour time frame. And... Yeah it may not work that way because now you're going to have to gap and skip parts versus a TV show where you could masterfully fluent out the story. So you're not missing and it'll hit all of the beats that it needs to hit to make that thing work. I mean, that's just my opinion on that. No, I, I totally agree with you on that. When, when it comes to trying to expand upon a story like Metroid, you definitely, it's definitely something you have to take your time with. You can't, you can't shorthand it. You can't rush it because then you're going to end up creating logic gaps. That is definitely going to be a turnoff to the, the, the main base of what you're trying to portray, especially when it comes to Samus and just her fight against all these different things that she's, these potential enemies that she could end up going up against. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, 
Um, but what do you guys think about a Metroid TV show? I think it would be awesome. And if done the right way, I think it definitely could go, you know, if I had to guess, you could easily go five seasons. You know, even if that was all you could do was five seasons, that that's you could and give them that quality, give them that high stakes quality. Like, like they did the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian looked like it should have been a movie. <laughs> but you're getting it on a TV with movie quality production. And I think with all of these films, they are all of these games, they could do movie quality production on, you know, especially this one on a television level. And it will be really interesting to see her, how she upgrades her weapons, how she uses, especially when she turns into the ball. That'll be really fascinating to see how they do explain that one. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was the main part of the storyline that I would really be invested in. I just need to know how did she manage to pull her into the ball? It could, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think it has. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. But anyway, I think it would be really interesting to tell, especially if you could come up with a with a plausible type solution. <laughs> Obviously, it'll be like way out there because it's all like you know, it's all make believe anyway. But if you could tell it to make people be like, you know what? That makes sense. So if you could do that, then, you know, you've, you've got people hooked. But again, you guys leave us a comment and let us know what you think about that becoming a TV show or movie. All right. The next one uh, that I would like to discuss is Dead Space. Now, Dead Space is one of those where I would love, absolutely love to see as a live action movie. Put it in the realm of, of the jump scares that you could get with The Conjuring, but give me that fear factor like Alien, you know? Something that'll make me be like, oh, God, what's creeping around the corner, you know? <laughs> and I like the story that they told in the first animated movie. The second one I didn't really care for, but the first one, the way they told that story when it, it involves like religion and this pillar, you know, being the, like being sent from the gods for us to, you know, to, to use and, you know, pray for and all that stuff. And it turns yeah, out that it's, yeah. And, and then these creatures, you know, come up and attack us and they can't get close to it, but everything revolves around that pillar. So I think if you could do that, Within a movie realm, live action, that could be really good. I mean, you're talking like super horror, rated R, <laughs> you know, limbs getting chopped off. And that. you got to do it right, though. Got to do it right. It, it absolutely, so. absolutely has to be rated. <laughs> if anything less than that, you must don't even make it. <laughs> yeah, don't even make it. Don't even bother. That was my nice. oh. That's like what they did with Spawn. It's like, yes, they're making a Spawn movie. Oh, it's PG-13. <laughs> and that's where they messed up. That's where yeah. they messed up. Yeah, it's like Dead Space is definitely one of those titles where you absolutely cannot go anything less than rated R. That uh, uh, a, a franchise of that nature demands that it be rated R. It can't yes. be. Anything. If you want this to be successful, if you want this to have its true consistency, you got to do a rated R. There's no question. <laughs> and I and I feel with it being rated R, you know, it 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 opens up, you know, the especially the gore factor. The gore factor you already know is going to be high in that movie. Yeah. It's going to be really <laughs> high. It's going to be really high. And I think one thing that they would definitely, absolutely, no question, would have to really bring out the ambience of is that that real isolation when Isaac is making his way through this 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 uh, this ship that you know anything can happen at any time. Like the way if you guys have played Alien: Isolation, it's gotta feel like that. I was just thinking that same thing. It's got to feel like that. Like every time he peeps around the corner, you're like, oh, God, what's there? What's there? I'm creeped out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I think you could really get away with doing practical effects with that film. You absolutely I think you could as far as like, you know, like the, the characters having like extra arms and and um, 
and their body shapes and everything. I think there's a way that you can do that practically that would that would feel more real and that it would I think you can tell a great story with that versus making those characters CGI. So I think that's something to behold, especially that. I I would dare say if you were going to do a dead space type film, the film that I would fundamentally not so much copy, but get influenced from is the thing. I think mm. the thing is a great, great influencer for dead space. So, I mean, that's just my opinion because when, when those creatures like attack or slash or kill anybody, they become creatures themselves, or you can see the madness that goes on in people's heads, you know, with them like freaking out and stuff or getting slashed and it's like everything's in their head and makes them like deranged and crazy. Yeah. I could see that. I could totally see that. And I think the thing would be a great, great learning tool to, to build that on. In my yeah. opinion. No, I, I think that's definitely, uh, I think that's definitely one good influencer right there because for anyone who's played the game, there was definitely people going mad. If you watch the animated short, um, that was another one that um, where the people were going mad. They started, you know, doing stuff to their own crewmates and things of that nature. Like all those elements were there, you know? Mm -hmm. And then also just the fact of, you know, seeing how some of these creatures came to be like, I wish I can remember the name of them, but it was like those those flying things that would stick right into the heads of dead bodies. Oh yeah, they're, they're like crazy. face huggers that could fly. <laughs> <laughs> My <history. laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just to see those kinds of elements, and let's face it, like they could with the right CG, you could really make those things look menacing because those are definitely the kind of things you do not want to be attacking you. Right. I mean, if you guys played Dead Space 2, you know what I mean. That opening <laughs> was crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential. And I think, too, with Dead Space, I think keeping it with that dark, mysterious element. And I would dare say, don't give this movie any music. You can have it for, like, your intro and your outro and stuff like that. But throughout most, if not 90% of the film, don't have any music at all. Because the eeriness of the atmosphere would be just enough to terrify you. Yeah, that is smart. That is smart. Yeah, yeah. Let the sounds that you hear, especially if you're in the movie theater or even if you happen to be watching uh, or streaming the movie, if it went digital and you're listening to it uh, through headphones, the sounds of the scrapes and the clings and the clangs. That's your music right there. That's IMAX, your baby. Give me IMAX all day long. <laughs> man, 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 man. I'm a huge That's advocate for IMAX. A movie like that, I would definitely watch in 4D. I would watch it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 4D. Oh, man, you killed me with that one. <laughs> I would definitely do it. 4D, I would give it to me in like, 3D. Would... <laughs> yeah, I would definitely do it. I, I would have to go that route for that kind of movie because that would, that would definitely make... If you want to feel... Like you're a part of the show, that would definitely do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think too, I think too, would be absolutely great is the time frame in which you could drop them. If you could drop that like in October, like during Halloween time, dude, that's the perfect time. The perfect time for something like that. Yeah. So I don't know. Dead space, man. Like dead space would be that would be a winner for me. And it, and yeah. You know, again, I think with that one, you could do a mixture of three where you can have the CGI element, you can have the live action, and you can have the practical effects. I think that would be the one film that you could really, really tell well using all three of those elements. And the fact that the helmet that the guy wears and the light, you know, the 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 the, the mm -hmm. suit that he wears that keeps track of his life with those light bars, I think would be like a huge indicator that you are now watching Dead Space. <laughs> you know, and again, everything's dark, so you can't really see anything and stuff will just pop out. The jump scares, they got to be on point. They got to oh, yeah. be on point, man. They can't they can't just come out just all willy-nilly and you're just like, oh, that wasn't that scary. No, give yeah. me a true jump scare, at least two or three good ones. 
<laughs> yeah, that uh, a movie like that with the type of jump scares it has. Yeah, I think there'll be a couple people getting heart attacks. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and you, I you. Ooh. Yeah, and it would be it would be. So if I had to use an example of a very surprising jump scare, take uh take that movie The Nun. We'll just say the trailer from The Nun. Now right. in that trailer, at the end of that trailer, the girl was walking. She had like the little torch or flashlight or whatever she had. She's walking down the hallway. The nun is following her behind her the whole time. She stops, turns around, sees her standing there. And then the other one comes directly from another direction and pushes her up. Like the, just the scare of that alone. Like you're thinking there's two of them now. So yeah. I think when you come to an element of a surprise like that, I think is really, really telling. And it could really help push the story and yeah. really give you that nice scare factor. And I just think Dead Space overall, with the right kind of story being told in the right direction and the filming of the atmosphere, um, I think that could be done extremely well. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. I think I think the, the absolute biggest challenge for them would be to try to find a way of creating a scene to where basically it doesn't like they have to try to eliminate almost obviously there's going to be some cliche elements where you're going to be like, okay, I know I'm, I'm sure something's going to happen right about here. But right. I think also too, like you said earlier, the fact that there'd be no music, there's nothing that will signify that something's going to happen or even potentially happen. Exactly. So that, that automatically eliminates the giveaway factor. Another thing too, is just the way the scenes are set up to where it's like, if they happen to be looking in a certain direction or the lighting happens to be shining down on a particular thing, you know, you can almost guarantee, okay, something is going to happen revolving around this particular area because of the way the ambience of the scene plays out. If they can somehow try to minimize all of these cliche things to make it play out to where literally you're not going to know what happens until it actually happens, you have got absolute mas mastery of ma movie magic right there. Mm -hmm. So now the question becomes, who would we get to direct this thing? Who would we get to write this thing? Uh, me personally, I wouldn't have any issue with Ridley Scott. Okay. Ridley Scott's a good choice. Um, ah, shoot. Who would I go with? It's got to be somebody that's an expert at horror. That's really good horror. I would say Justin Lin, but I, I don't. I don't really want to go in that direction because then it start feeling too much like the conjuring. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um trying to think who, you know what? I'll go with, I'll go with Dave Velenu who's doing okay. the new Dune movie. I would go with him. I think he has, I think he has the chops to create that tension and that, that, that scare factor of like no musical sound. Just like, just an audible sound mm -hmm. when it comes to situations. I think he he could be a potential master at that for that type of film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good and choice. Good choice. So, so writer wise, writer wise, I just go with whoever does the games. Yeah, if they can, you know, somebody that could that could tell it in a way that, like. I would have to see what they do as far as like creating, like if they were to come out with a new dead space right now, what mm -hmm. the CG film would look like, like the short film within, uh, within the game. Show me that. If I know that it feels too much like a game, I'll be like, okay, you got to find somebody outside. But if it feels like they, what they did with Diablo and made that feel like a movie, that's who you, I think you should get. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's got that feel. It's definitely got that feel, and and I think that's that's kind of the thing that makes um, doing a, a rather it's all CG or CG mixed with live action. I think that's definitely one of the trickier elements when it comes to creating something like that. Is just the fact of trying to give it that that bigger feel. Like this mm -hmm. is a movie that you're watching. This is not a trailer. You know, right. to give it that kind of ambiance, that kind of energy. Um, that's definitely going to be tricky to, to pull off. But. So I, yeah, these games, 
man, these games in the movies, man. I think we had some pretty good ideas, man. You know, or at least some potentials that could, you know, be done. But it really just depends on what these studios do, what Hollywood does. I mean, we've already we've already seen some pictures and screenshots of um of Uncharted with Tom yes. Holland. And the image that I seen, I thought he looked pretty good. I'm not even gonna lie. And it's supposed to take place with him being a younger Nathan Drake. I'm a, and I did hear that Nolan North was there, you know, to kind of give his blessing in a sense and kind of checked out everything. And even he was pretty hype about it. So, you know, I've got I've got high hopes for this for this uncharted movie. But anyway, you guys let me know, let us know what you think about you know, Dead Space becoming a movie, or maybe you prefer it being a TV show. Who knows? But, you know, I think this was, this was pretty good. This was pretty good. I actually, uh, I actually kind of really enjoyed this conversation. We didn't really have anything. I mean, there's, there's, I'm sure there was like plenty of news out there, but we didn't really want to go into that and just do news all the time. We kind of wanted to have some fun. So this was our way of kind of having some fun and just getting you guys more involved. Um, what I would like to do is one of these days just do a Q&A with our fan base. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah, so it would definitely be later down the line. But, yeah, I definitely would like to do that. So, yeah. So, anyway, you guys, let us know what you think about all of our selections and, you know, what one you would like to see turned into a movie. And you could leave us a comment with that down below there. But, anyway, I just want to take this time to say thank you guys so much for joining us on the podcast. Damar, did you have anything to add on before I actually close this out? Uh, nope. Uh, just the fact of, uh, you know, one of the things that I definitely love about this podcast is the fact that we – that we do use this platform to get our thoughts and our opinions out. But again, you guys' thoughts or opinions are absolutely important as well, you know, because that give and take is what makes or breaks a podcast. So the fact that we can actually share our ideas, our thoughts, our reasons why for this and that, you know, I think that definitely creates a stronger uh, in circle based community that I think everyone can definitely uh, take pride in being a part of as far as that. And we all don't have to like, not like each other's, you know, thoughts on what we think on certain games into movies and things like that. But we're just having fun. You know, it's nothing to get bent out of shape for or anything like that. Let's just keep it friendly. You know, let's keep the community strong and positive. That's the main thing that we want to present with our podcast is just being strong and positive and just kind of just, you know, giving our thoughts and opinions on stuff without, you know, trying to, you know, get people woke or anything like that. That's not what we're here for. We're, we're, we're not here for all the bureaucracy and all that stuff. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you guys really enjoyed what we talked about here. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. Make sure you smash that like button, turn on that bell for all notifications, and leave us comments. Please leave us comments, because we love comments. We're not saying this just to say this. We genuinely love comments, whether they're good or bad. We take all comments in and we come to y'all with the best possible approach we can about it. And again, make sure you guys hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at Platform Gamer P1. That is a P with the number one. <laughs> Make sure you guys do that. This episode will be uploaded sometime tomorrow. Um, in audio form. So if you guys want to listen to us through Podbeam and Spotify, it should be uploaded sometime tomorrow afternoon, hopefully. But um, yeah, we'll get all of that straightened out. We'll get this uploaded more and set up for YouTube uh, tonight. But um, make sure you hit us up on Facebook as well and leave us a like and follow us there as well. But again, thank you all so much. Uh, we had a great time and we are so glad you guys joined us here and we will talk to y'all later. Take care. Have a good night.